Hey guys, it's Andy Christie and this is the final whistle. Welcome to the latest episode of Rugby Connection Presents The Final Whistle. This week's guest, you've probably seen his parents' reactions getting into the national team all over social media. He's been tearing up at Saracens in the Prem this year. It's Andy Christie. Andy, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are we getting on? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well, thank you. I'm doing well. Um, just got back from, from Edinburgh last night, so a little bit tired first first few days in camp. But um, no, things are going well, thank you. How, how, is, how are you finding your first week in Scotland camp? Yeah, it was class. I mean, all the boys, all the coaches are, are awesome. Um, just, you know, it's just it's different. It's different to what I'm used to. Um, obviously, a bunch of new names, a bunch of new calls, a lot of things to learn. So, um, but no, it's, it's been cool. And I've, I really enjoyed my first couple of days. So I'm looking forward to going back in. Good, good. Um, we've got a question that we ask all our guests. It's nice and easy. It's what got you into rugby? Um, there was, there was an old, like a few old school teachers. I, I used to play football like you know, most boys do when they're, when they're young. Um, and my older brother sort of started playing because a few school teachers got him into it. And yeah, I was, I was a really, really big fat kid. So I needed the exercise. Um, so, so that's pretty much why I was, it was, it was real close to home. So I just got down there and yeah, started running around a little bit. So good a reason as any. Um, so I mean, you've got a question for Andy. Um, well, I ask the questions people really want to know, so I'll go deep in it straight away. Best player you've been on a night out with? Best player on a night out? Aye. Is that like the best at rugby on a night out or the best on a night out? Like it the can best be both. Time. You can choose both. <laughs> stories are more uh, than welcome on here. No, nah, I, can't, I, can't, I can't give any stories. Um, a, lot of lads are, a lot of lads are class tonight, so to be fair. Um, I was recently on a, on a stag day at Tenerife with a few of the Saturdays boys. Um, so that, that was awesome. My, my housemate, Sean Raphael, he's, he's good on it. Um, Vuna Polar's very, very, very good. Uh, Sean Maitland's great. Duncan Taylor. Um, Richard Brownson is his stag day. So he was... Yeah, he's he's good value. Vinny Cox. I mean, there's yeah, but like the whole the whole the whole Saris, all the Saris boys are, are great on the steam, let's say. Um <laughs> so so yeah, there's there's no one sort of in particular. Um yeah, Ben Elnick, Zeke, Judy. Yeah, there's all the I guess boys, you haven't done it in Edinburgh yet, have you? I haven't in Edinburgh, no, I haven't. So <laughs> I I've been told I've got a lot to look forward to. Oh, you do. Oh, um, you do. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, sometime soon. I mean, you mentioned Andy Good there. We all know his <laughs> God tier three day bender, and that's all we need to say on that. <laughs> mm, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so he's he, yeah, he leads it a little bit sometimes. So, <laughs> all right, you got a question for Andy? Yeah, um, I guess on the same kind, so like similar vein. What is it about Saracens that makes it like so special to you? Um, I think, I mean, I don't know how many times sort of you've spoken to boys at Saris, um, but lads, lads often talk about like the togetherness. Um, we, we, we put a lot of emphasis on what we call social capital. So getting to know each other, um, you know, going on, going out with each other and having like socials, going on trips, all these sorts of things. So it really, really <clears throat> helps you get close to the boys and obviously, you know, as as a team, if you're close with each other, if you play like go out together, spend a lot of time together, you care about each other more, and therefore you're going to have better connection on the pitch as well. Definitely, definitely evident as well. Mm. Um, we've got a question from Sean now. Um, what is your favourite opposition to go against? So both team and player. So favourite team to play against and favourite player to go against. Favourite team to play against. Wow. I'm not really sure, you know. Um, there's, there's no team that I'd say I'm like lucky against, or uh, no, I haven't. To be honest, I haven't played enough against enough teams in the league to to sort of have a have a favourite opposition. Uh, Lond- we've had a we've had a few really good clashes with London Irish this year. Um, they beat us in the Prem Cup, and we came back well in the second half and didn't quite manage it. Um, and then we drew drew to them at our place, and we just beat them the other week. So. Yeah, they they've been they've been a sort of come out of nowhere, but randomly good competition. Obviously, Exeter's always big at Saris. Um, we had a great 
obviously great win down at Bath this year, but um, yeah, that was that was that was a pretty cool cool game to be involved in. Quins Quins is always big. I'd say probably Quins. Quins is always quite big there, though. I guess I suppose our most local rivals, and there's always like a little bit bit there. So probably Quins. That's fair. Any particular player you like coming up against so far, or? No, nah, there's no one. There's no particular person I'd say. Um, uh, my friend, he, he's he's at Ealing now. Uh, my friend Ruben Bird I went to school with him, and I've I've banged him a few times when I played him. So I probably say <laughs> Rubes. Um, yeah, I played him twice and smashed him twice. So yeah, I say Rubes. Yeah, that's fair. So then, um, what? How did you actually make it into the Saracens setup and stuff? Um, so I actually grew up in Bristol. Oh. Um, I grew up in Bristol and I was at Bristol Academy. Um, but I, when I played for Scotland on the 16s, after that, I went to, to Harrow for sixth form in London. So when I went to Harrow, um, yeah, I moved to Saracens as well. And then from there, just got, got a contract out of school. Nice. Straight to the point, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty basic. Um, Ollie? Um, similar to like, who's your favourite opposition? Who's your favourite player to play with? And maybe so, sort of similar. And who's someone that every time you play with, you just sort of think, wow, like this guy's good. Well, um, I mean, again, it's diff- these questions are difficult because I, I find myself wanting to name like our entire team. Everyone, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, um, you know, Mako and Jamie. Uh, Jamie George, Jamie George, really good. Like speaks really well on the pitch, as in in the heat of the moment. So he'll give you those like comms to kind of get off the line and smash someone, and gives you the confidence to do that. Um, Billy, I've I've always liked playing obviously in the back row. Billy, and I've I've learned a lot from him. Um, I mean, obviously Marrow's, you know, does a lot of things that a lot of people can't do, and and kind of the he's just constant for eighty minutes. Um, so he's he's the kind of person that just gives you energy because you see him nausing at a breakdown or smashing someone or that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, I suppose it's just a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot in the forwards um, for me. Again, like Vinnie Cock, he's just putting a great carry, that kind of thing. So it's, it's mostly those sorts of things, the physical battles. When when I see someone doing something outstanding, um, that that off that just always gives me energy. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of lads who do it at our club, luckily. Hard to pick one, definitely. Yeah, I can't pick one. Um, Sean, we're going back to another question from Sean. Um, he was asking, what is the best game you've ever been to? Best game I've ever been to? Ooh. Um, oh, actually, that's easy. Um, yeah, when when we beat Exeter at Twickenham, I was, I was in the ACAD at the time. Uh, when, we, when we came back, so like 12 points in 14 minutes or that kind of thing. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that, that game was unbelievable because, you know, uh, it, was, it was one of those games, obviously, I was, I was in the academy, but I just felt like a fan watching it. Um, and, like, you're so attached and, and you know, there's, there's so much, like, so much emotional investment in the game. And, yeah, it was, it was from a point where it seemed like the game was so nearly lost, um, but the boys just found something. So that was... That was special. That was really, really special. Yes, it definitely sounds special. And obviously, you mentioned you dabbled on it earlier, playing in the championship and now the premiership. Is there any like what's your biggest difference in playing in both respective leagues? I'd say um, the championship is is slower. It's it's very physical, and I think the thing with the championship is teams. Um, know sort of what they're good at and, and just try and play that specifically. So, you know, obviously we had that semi-famous loss against uh, Cornish Pirates, but they, they just knew what they were good at. So they, they knew that, you know, set piece, they, they, they beat us up, to be fair. And so they, they kind of kept the game there. They kept it quite slow. Um, and, yes, yeah, so I think teams really just try and play their own games in the chat, whereas... Obviously, in the Prem, uh, you can say like the ability of individuals generally is, is a bit higher. So teams kind of have a few more few more strings to their bow, um, which I suppose, you know, they don't, they don't just play play one specific way. Teams are kind of a bit more versatile. So yeah. I'd say that that's quite, quite a big difference. You don't really necessarily know what you're going to get from a team in the Prem, whereas in the Championship, 
you can sort of know what you're going to get, but it's about stopping that. Fair enough. Um, Ollie? Um, yeah, um, sort of one focused around you and your game. Is there any player from your childhood that you've based your game around? Specifically? Um, no, there's not. There's not really. I think that that's kind of... It's funny because I think that was something I tried to do a little bit um, a few years ago. You know, if I played, say, at seven, I'd try and play like... Uh, Ben Earl or if I played six I'd try and play like Mike Rhodes or eight I'd try and play like Billy and it just doesn't work you know it, it, it doesn't work you can't you can't try and be loads of different people um, obviously it's, it's great to, to have examples of people and, and I, I looked up to you know a lot of players growing up um, like you know um, Toby Falatau I think it's class um, always thought Billy was, was great when I was younger Stefan Armitage for a few years um, but you know, I, I now I now kind of realise it's, it's about understanding what you're good at. Um, you, you just got to find what you're good at and, and your strengths and kind of play to them as much as possible. And and for me, I've, I've played six, seven, and eight, so it's about bringing those strengths regardless of which numbers on my back. I was going to ask that as well. Do you do you have a preference on which you play, or are you happy just to slot in anywhere? Yeah, yeah I'm happy to slot in anywhere. I think six is probably. Um, it was the position I play the most. It's probably my, my most natural position. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd go with six. I, I like playing eight because you get more your hand on the ball more. Um, but yeah, I think six I'm most naturally suited to. So man, sounds good. Um, more on the social aspect of things again. Have you been able to do much of that in the, your first Scotland squad? Obviously, I know COVID's a bit different. You've got to stay in a lot of the time, but has there been much of a social aspect or team building, morale building stuff in the Scotland oh. squad? Oh, not so far. I mean, I've only been in uh, for, what, three days. <laughs> so, <Damn it. laughs> yeah. so I was only in, I was only in camp for three days. Uh, so not so far, but the boys, the boys are all class and, and they do, you know, we've done, we've done a few little things to try and try and get a bit of that together. We played some sort of like kick tennis and a few games the other night. Um, and yeah, lads, lads are all class anyway. So, it's quite it's quite an easy group to to get in, involved in. Guys are all sort of nice and welcoming. So yeah, it was it was a bit more of a I suppose daunting might be the wrong word, but daunting prospects going in. Just I didn't really know anyone, um, and everyone's Sean well, Maitland, your only other Saracens teammates, just been called up, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was he was called in. So yeah, it was that was that was helpful having him there. Um, yeah, I'm fairly close to Scott, so it was nice to nice to have him him around. Happy days. Uh, following up with what Simon said, I was going to ask when the squad first got announced, did any of the Scotland boys like reach out to you before like camp? Um, no, I spoke to I spoke to Cam in Redpath, so I've known Cam for for a few years. I, I played with him from under sixteen, so um, yeah, I spoke to Cammy a little bit. But obviously, we have um, Duncan Taylor, Sean Maitland. Tim Swinson, Kalamanta Hill, who have all been involved before. So I talked to them a little bit about expectations and, and what the guys are like, but I only had positives. So I, d I didn't have really any worries from on that on that behalf. Good, good. Um, going back to your positioning, um, is there any dream back row partners you'd love to have, like past or present, and you could pick any position you want in the back row as well? <laughs> um, I think... Ardy Surveyor is unbelievable. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I'd I'd love to I'd love to play with Ardy Surveyor, I'd say. Um also I I like um Rodney Cialo. So I, I, I got coached by him in in New Zealand. So he's like sixty odd caps for New Zealand at number eight. So it'd be quite cool to play with him knowing sort of about him as I do now. Um but you know, I'm I'm pretty lucky with the with the guys I've I've been able to play with and, and train with, so can't really complain. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so, man? Um, oh, I forgot, Mike. Keep going. I forgot. I just completely... <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's fine. We'll just throw it to Ollie. Um, okay, a bit of a hypothetical one. If you can start any one game from the Six Nations against any team, who are you picking? <laughs> um, obviously, it'd be great to play England. Uh, obviously, it'd be great to play against England. Um, but also, I think I think Wales, um, because it's because it's played in Wales, it's, it's closest to 
to home for me. Um, and I know mm. that like all my family would be able to get there. But, oh, because yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a Cardiff boy originally. Uh, yeah, so yeah. very close. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but no, the England at Murrayfield's unbelievably special. So, I uh, pro probably have to go with that, followed by Wales. That's good games. Both good games. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, did, did you find that question? <laughs> yeah, I remembered it. What is your connection to Scotland? Because I don't actually know the answer to this. So, what? How? Are okay. You... Yeah, um, Scotland. Oh, so my grandmother was born born in Scotland, um, and my my granddad's also um, roots are from Scotland. His dad is Scottish, um, so yeah, there's quite a strong Scot Scottish connection. My grandparents, so my mum's always <laughs> always identified as Scottish, and yeah, so it's just it's just oh. through my mum's side really. My dad's Nigerian, so oh wow, yeah. So I can't. I'm not really going to go play for Nigeria. In the football, if they yeah, if they developed that in, in the rugby, then it might be more of a conversation. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the the new rules are there, so you can always yeah, change well, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not not looking no, to no, any no. times too. We, we want to keep you, Andy. We want to keep you. Um, sticking with uh, going back to Sean's questions, actually, he's got. Have you got any advice you'd give to like your younger self? Or even like young players want to come into play rugby. Yeah, um, I get get like a few messages on Instagram sometimes from from kids, and, and I, I just always think the main the main thing is to to enjoy it and work hard. Those are the main two things. I think if you do that, then you know, in anything, the world's your oyster. If you can do something you enjoy and you can work as hard as you can towards it, then yeah, you can you can achieve anything really. Yeah, I can't argue with that. That's well said. Hundred yeah, percent. Ollie, you got another question? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess it's a bit chop and change, but um, had you had you had previous contact with the Scotland setup? Had you had you considered other like had you considered England? Had you considered Scotland? Had, like, was there any idea for you that you were going to head down the Scotland route before um, this, before this call up? Well, I played like I played Scotland sixteens um, and then played. I then didn't get into Scotland 18s when I trialed. So I then played England 18s and 20s. Um, and then after that, you know, that's that's done with the age group stuff. But um, to be honest, I mean, this this season's the, the first season I've started playing consistently for Saris besides our season in the Champ. Um, so I hadn't really thought about it from from either side, from England or from Scotland. I just, I just wanted to play as well as I could for England. Oh, for Saris, sorry. Yeah, caught you out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I went for as well as I could for Saris. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, it was, it was just a case of, you know, doing that. And then Gregor contacted me. Um, and, like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was absolutely over the moon. Like, as you know, I just felt in that moment um, and, and just getting a, getting a vibe from him, like, it, it just felt right. Um, like, I felt, it feels, you know, it felt like I'd be so, so well suited to Scotland and so well suited to what he's got going on. It's such an exciting group. Um, yeah. and, and there's so many, you know, good, good young guys. And I just, I just want to be involved in that, and you know, to be able to learn from, from the great coaches they've got there. And yeah, I, I felt like it, it suited me so well. Um, that I can imagine doing anything else really. Yeah. You definitely made the right choice. Oh, not, yeah. by, <laughs> not, not by it at all, but you definitely made the right choice on that. Um, we've got a few fan questions. So, Finn Walford too has asked, "How excited were you to be battling out with the likes of Jimmy Ritchie and Rory Darge?" Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, super excited just to get into camp. I mean, I'm not looking at you know at this point. Certainly, it's like battling it out. I'm just trying to get in there and, and learn things and you know get a feel of, of a new system and and all that kind of thing. So basically, it's just exciting to meet these guys who are you know obviously tearing up for for their clubs and. It's all you know. They're they're more unfamiliar to me than because I don't play them every week, and yeah. so it's, it's it's cool to see sort of different guys and, and how they how they operate. That's fair. Um, as it has it actually sunk in yet? Because obviously, when when you put the videos out of your parents, especially your mum, who nearly fell and like walking the dog, <laughs> yeah. and that was brilliant. Has it has it actually sunk in yet that you're in an international setup? Um. 
Yeah, I mean, it's sort of it's getting there. Um, it's it's still pretty cool. You know, I think I think you can't walk around so with your head in the clouds for too long. I need to, yeah, you know, I've just been training, so I need to knuckle down and focus. Um, but it's still, yeah, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, I just because when when the squad got announced and your name came up, you were you blew up my my social media with just Chelsea's <laughs> in the Scotland team. Like, Darcy put all like, well done, Andy. It was all very yeah, super yeah. And, and then of course your your parents stealing the show, which was just <laughs> yeah. amazing on both ends. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm obviously no, I'm still still absolutely over the moon to be involved. Um, but like I say, um, you know, you can't can't let it sort of affect you. And I, I can't be in camp, kind of just just starstruck, you know. I've got I've got to be there and be myself and and kind of try and show what I can do. When yeah, are you back course. up in camp next? Uh, Sunday after after the game, sorry. Oh, no, he's back back up in Edinburgh still, is it? Yeah. And then that that will be you then, won't it? Because then the Six Nations is next week. Exciting time. Yeah. Yeah. So it uh, depends depends on my involvement, I suppose, but. Yeah, back in camp, so it's just test week next week, so it's exciting. Very exciting. Um, we've, got, we've got a question from our good friend Carwin from Uneducated Rugby. He's asked, basically, just how did you find out in general about getting in the squad? Um, yeah, so I spoke to Gregor, I want to say, on, on the Monday um, of the week of the, the announcement. Um, and I'd never spoken to him before. He gave me a call and just sort of said... He wants to get to know me, he wants to sort of get a feel and, and see how I'd feel should I get the call up and that kind of thing. Um, and like I, yeah, obviously just sort of said, you know, I'd be honoured if, if that was the case. Um, but that was kind of it. We, we spoke for about half an hour just, yeah, like I said, getting to know, get, he he got to know me, I got to know him a little bit. Um, and then that, that was the end of the conversation and he just said to me at the end, sort of, you know, they were making um, the final decisions on the Tuesday, so he'd let me know after that. And then he uh, called me on the Tuesday. Uh, I just finished training, and he said, "Congratulations, you're in the squad." So, oh, that's it was, yeah, it was, it was it was all quite a whirlwind. Like you know, went from having never spoken to him before, you know, forty eight hours previous to him telling me I was in the squad. It's brilliant. Uh, as I, I, I actually wondered that myself, so I'm kind of glad, glad Colin after it. just because you do hear people. Like, like you just said, you got told before, like we all knew, but there are some that like wait and then once the squad's in, it's like, like, holy shit, I'm in the Scotland team, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But that no, was good, it was good, right. to, good to get a heads up, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so, man, I'm, I'm exhausted my questions. You've exhausted your questions, that's fine. How long you got anymore? Same with Simeon, I think. Same with Simeon. You've you've crushed it, Andy. You've you've <laughs> nailed on all the questions. You've, you've answered everything we've got, and we're just so glad that you came on. We got you while you're hot, hot sort of thing. Like you know, <laughs> you're the social media boys. So I dropped you a message, just chanting the luck, and you were very keen. <laughs> so that's no, cool. yeah, no pleasures, pleasures all mine, guys. Um, I found out this the other day. You actually spoke to Ollie. I think last year. I think it was. Did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, whether or not you remember is doesn't really matter. Um, in the Saracens supporters forum, in yeah. the part of the um, uh, just just as the Black Lives Matter um campaign started, and the the club put a video out which you took part in. So I wasn't sure if you'd recognise yeah. me from that. I didn't expect you would, but I met <laughs> you asked me to come on here. Um, but yeah, that. Oh, sick. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite an important time, obviously. Um, you know, that's really cool. Definitely. We're always finding connections here at Rugby Connection. That's kind of <laughs> it always it oh, works. It, it works so accidentally, and, oh, and it's, always, it's always aligned. It's fine. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but no, this is, has been an absolute blast, and like good luck to you in Scotland camp, and hope to see you get a nice run out either in the navy or or the white jersey that's that's behind me. And yeah, yeah, it's just great, and obviously keep turning it up at Saracens and then the Prem and. Yeah, just the sky's the limit, really. Yeah, thanks a lot, fellas. Sure Appreciate it. England. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do what I can. Yeah, that's like a must for us. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I'll do as much as I can. Cheers, guys.
No worries. This has been Rugby Connections final whistle with Andy Christie, and we will see you next time.